Hey guys, good morning. For today's reading lesson, I'm going to reread you, sorry. I'm going to reread you my rotten redheaded older brother. I know that the lady read it to you yesterday and I think she did a great job. I loved hearing her read that story. But I'm going to reread it today because we're going to work on the characters and the setting and the plot with this story as well. I know we've already done it with Big Red Lollipop, but we're going to practice it again with my rotten redheaded older brother. All right. I'm going to kind of turn it so you guys can see the story too a little bit, but I know it's not as good as hers. My brother and our mother and I all lived with my grandparents in their, on their farm in Union City, Michigan. Now my babushka, my grandmother, knew lots of things. She knew just how to tell a good story, she knew how to make ordinary things magical, and she knew how to make the best chocolate cake in Michigan. After she told my brother and me a grand tale from her homeland, we'd always ask, Bubby, is that true? And she'd answer, of course it's true, but it may not have happened. And then she'd laugh. We can look at the picture better. There we go. I may do that. I may just read it and then show you the picture. That works better. Now, I knew that she loved me all right, but I couldn't quite understand how she could even like my older brother Richard. He had orange hair that was like a wire. He was covered in freckles, and he looked like a weasel with glasses. The only thing that my bubby didn't seem to know was how perfectly awful my brother really was. Have you ever had a brother or sister that was perfectly awful? Me too. Mind you, he was always nice whenever she was around us, but as soon as she'd leave, he would do something terrible to me and then laugh. You can see what he's doing terrible in that picture. Yeah, he's got her doll. There were so many things that I couldn't stand about him. The worst was that he was always telling me he could do just about everything better than I. Bet I could pick more blackberries than you, he jeered at me one day. No, you can't. Can so? Cannot. Can, he whispered. Not, I said louder. Can, he whispered so low that I could hardly hear him. Not, I screamed back. We both picked berries for most of the afternoon. Well, he upped and did it. He not only picked more berries than I, he set a record that wasn't even challenged for the next 10 years. You make me sick, Richard Barber, I yelled at him. And then he smiled that smile that only a rotten red-headed older brother could smile. Look at all those blackberries. They kind of look like blueberries in the picture. I guess I would have to face it. He could run the fastest, climb the highest, throw the farthest, sit the longest, get the dirtiest, burp the loudest, and spit the farthest. He had no equal, certainly not me. And I'm four years older than you. Always have been, always will be. He sneered. There he is doing all those wonderful things he can do better than her. There had to be something, something I could do that he couldn't. Then an inspired thought comforted me like a fresh breeze on a hot summer day. Oh, Richie, I cooed as I stood next to the rhubarb bushes. Do you like rhubarb? No, he said. It's the sourest stuff on the planet. Now I knew at long last that I had him. I bet I can meet or eat more of this raw rhubarb than you can without getting the puckers, I challenged. I don't think so. I do. I don't. I do. Don't. Do, I said furiously as I grabbed the first stalk and started chewing it almost down to the leaf. That's what rhubarb looks like. I've heard of rhubarb, but I've never eaten it either. Have you guys ever ate rhubarb? Yeah, me either. When I couldn't get one more sour bite into my mouth, he was still eating with relish. I thought you said you don't like rhubarb, I said through pursed lips. I don't like it. I love it. He announced as he popped the last stalk into his mouth. I was so mad I couldn't even feel how my belly was starting to ache. 
I can't stand you, Richard Barber. A double dog can't stand you, I screamed as I went into the house to be consoled by my grandmother. Yeah, and I'm four years older than you too, you little twerp. Always have been and always will be, he called after me. And then he laughed, that rotten, red-headed older brother laughed. That night at dinner, I could hardly eat. Have you been eating angry apples again, child? Bubby asked as she sliced me a huge wedge of rhubarb pie. I baked your favorite. Richard gave me one of his extra rotten, weasel-eyed, greeny-tooth grins. Richard knows why she doesn't want to eat the pie, huh? Her belly hurts from eating all that other rhubarb. At bedtime, my bubby came and sat on the edge of my bed like she did every night. Look, a falling star, she said. We watched it streak across the sky. And then she spit twice between her fingers and gave her chest a loud thump. What did you do that for, Bubby? I was making a wish. Didn't you know that wishes on falling stars come true? At last, I knew how I was going to get back at my brother. For the longest time, I watched the dark sky until I saw a star shoot across the night. And then I spit between my two fingers and I slapped my chest. It was done. My wish was to do something, anything, better than my brother. I'd show him. The next morning, all I could think about was my wish. I was thinking about it so hard I almost didn't notice the wagons and trucks pulling into the field down the road near Four Corners. A traveling carnival, my brother shouted as he ran toward me. They're sitting up right here in the field. I bet I can eat more hot dogs than you can, he teased. He was already starting it, but this time, I was going to do something so incredible that even he would have to sit up and take notice. I had a star wish. I'd show my rotten, red-headed older brother all right. A carnival kind of looks like a fair, doesn't it? We call it a fair. That night, I ran straight for the merry-go-round. We must have taken 50 turns on that carousel, but then my brother got off. I knew I could do this longer than you, I shouted to my brother, feeling proud, but just a bit dizzy. Tricia, I heard my bubby call out. Get off from that thing. It's time to go home. The last thing I remember was I was stepping off from the platform. The next thing I knew, I woke up with Bubby sitting on the edge of my bed, and Mom and Grandpa were there too. You gave us all a fright, Mama said. How do you feel? What happened? I asked. You fell, my rotten red-headed older brother announced with the biggest grin on his face. I don't know what we would have done, my Bubby said softly. Your brother carried you all the way home, and then he had to run and get Dr. Lee. You had to have stitches. I watched it all, he said excitedly. You fell off the merry-go-round right into some pop bottles, my gramps added. You even passed out, my brother chirped. It looks like you finally did something special. It was from that exact moment that our relationship changed somehow. Thanks, Richie, I said to him. What's a big brother for anyway, he said blushing. I noticed something in this picture too. If you look, there's a real photograph of the author and her real brother in there. I just, it's kind of like an Easter egg, I found it. That night we were all out in the yard. On hot Michigan nights, it was my family's custom to sleep outside where it was cool. Look at those stars, Bubby said quietly. Wishes are funny, aren't they? I said. Sometimes they come true differently than what, they, what you think they will. That's why you have to be careful what you wish for. It just might come true, Bubby said. <laughs> Sorry. Just a reminder that Jane is picking up the Boys and Girls Club today. If you could go ahead and send your students up. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that. I don't guess any of you are riding Jean's bus to the Boys and Girls Club. <laughs> Good. Let's finish our story. All right. It just might come true. And then she squeezed both of our hands. Hang on to the grass, she whispered. Why, bub? My brother asked. 
because if we don't, we might float up to the stars. And then she leaned over and kissed us both three times. I kiss your eyes, and I hold both of your hearts in my good keeping. And this night, I thank God that I walk this earth with both of you. Amen. Then we all just lay on our blankets in the gentle summer night. I'll always be four years older than you, though, my brother whispered softly, and then he smiled. All of us held one another's hands, and then we all drifted off to sleep. <laughs> I like that story. It's a good one. All right, so we are going to use my rotten red-headed older brother to talk about characters and setting and the plot. Let me get that up where I need to be. Here we go. All right, so this is going to look familiar. We just used it the other day when we talked about Big Red Lollipop. So let's think about the characters. Hmm. Remember, the characters are who are in the story. Who's in the story? I'm going to let you pause the video, and I want you to think of all the characters you can. Restart the video when you're ready. Okay. I thought of the little girl, and it calls her Tricia in the book at the very end when she's on the merry-go-round her grandma yells Tricia get off that thing so we know that her name is Tricia even though it hardly ever says it and then of course it's her rotten red-headed brother which is Richard and then there's her babushka sometimes she calls her Bubby and that's her grandmother that's just the name they use for her grandmother and of course there's a mom and there's even a grandpa but he doesn't, he's not in the story much, but he is in it at the very end. So remember, the characters are just who's in the story. So we've got Tricia and Richard, which is the little girl and the brother. Bubby is their grandma, and then mom and the grandpa. All right, so setting. Remember, the setting is where are they at? Where's the story happening? And when is it happening? So, hmm. Hmm. I'm thinking. Oh, yeah, they were at their house, which is on a farm, because it even says that they live in Michigan on when they're at their grandparents on the farm, don't they? On their farm. So we're going to say on their grand, whoops, grandparents. I'm going to have to make that a little bit smaller so it fits farm in Michigan. So good. This story told us exactly where it was. Some stories don't, but this one did. So they're on their grandparents farm in Michigan. And we did talk about the other day how it also is, tells us when. It's supposed to be where and when. And we talked about how some stories don't tell you exactly when, but sometimes you can tell in the pictures, like if it was in the past a long time ago, or if it's in the future. And just by flipping through the story and thinking about the pictures, I mean, it doesn't look like it was way in the past. And I think in the carnival picture, does it even show maybe some cars in the carnival? Maybe. There's that announcer again. Hold on. This is the last call for Boys and Girls Club. <laughs> last call for Boys and Girls Club. <laughs> All right. Are we sure nobody needs to go to the Boys and Girls Club? <laughs> All right. I'm joking. Okay. Let's get back to our lesson. It's all, We're almost done. I think, yeah, it doesn't show anything in the pictures that would make me think this is in the past. So we're going to say, why isn't it working? Well, it's quit working on me for some reason. There we go. We're going to say it's also in the present because it's, we can't find any proof in the story that it isn't in the present. And it didn't tell us exactly when so we can just say it's in the present all right let's go down all right here comes the plot that beginning and middle and end and now the other day i we you all helped me with the beginning and the middle and then i had to let you guys tell me the end i'm going to do it a little different today this time i am going to tell you the middle and you have to tell me the beginning and the end. 
of my rotten red-headed older brother. So in the middle, I'm thinking of kind of in the middle. Well, I kind of remember the beginning. Oh, yeah, in the middle is kind of when they have that, that contest kind of to see who can eat more what. Yeah, who can eat that more rhubarb? That's kind of what's going on in the middle of the story. So I think that's what we need to talk about. Treat, whoops, it's not letting me type. Well, there we go. Tricia and Richard have a contest. I'm going to move that over so it fits to see who eats more roo, rhubarb. Tricia and Richard have a contest to see who can eat more rhubarb. And who wins? Yeah, he kind of tricks her a little bit. So we're going to add Richard wins because he does. He tricked her, but he did win the contest. So now your job is you're going to be have to think, okay, well, what happened before that? And then how did the story end? What happened at the end of the story? And that's our plot for the story. If you can remember who the characters are, who, where the setting was, and your beginning, middle, and end, you should do really, really well on this story. It's showing that you can remember it. Okay? Alright. Good luck.